Welcome. This is Creativity in Focus podcast. I'm your host for today, Jody McCraney Rusho, and I am here with someone that I am so delighted to see and to share with you. Um, I'm here with my friend, Sarinda Jones. Um, Hi. And Sarinda is a marvelous artist, and I just can't wait to, to let her tell you all about herself. But first, I just wanted to remind you that we have a creativity in podcast foc- uh, creativity in focus podcast. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. Uh, every Tuesday, and we what we do in these podcasts is we interview artists and we talk about what they're doing, uh, life as an artist. Um, what it's like to be a full-time artist, some of the things that they work on, some of the things they worry about, tips and tricks that they have. It's a really interesting view into all of the different ways that people make art because not all all artists are the same as you of course know by now. Um, So we of course would love to have you with us every Tuesday and we would love for you to share this. We love your sharing, we love your comments, we so appreciate your reviews. Um, and we are just really thrilled that you are here with us today. Um, so with all of that in mind, let me introduce to you the lovely Sarinda Jones. Sarin- Hi. Hi, Sarinda. <laughs> uh, tell us one sentence about yourself, and then we'll look at some beautiful artwork. One sentence about myself. I know it's a challenge. I'll let you have more you in a minute. You didn't send it to me <laughs> last night. I was hoping for like a little questionnaire so nope. I would know what you were going to say. Nope. Nope. She knows me very well. So um, one sentence about myself um, I'm a maker that's perfect mm-hmm. perfect yeah. so Sarinda does a lot of different kinds of artwork it's one of the things I admire the most about her um, is that she is a diverse artist but also maintains this incredibly tight focus which is really cool so one of the things that she does is paint um, mm-hmm. do. and we have one of the of your paintings here so tell me just a little bit about this painting here so this is an alcohol ink painting and it's done on a polypropylene paper so it's okay. a plastic kind of paper okay and it allows the ink to be on the surface of the glass or surface of the substrate. So, obviously, I'm talking about glass already. (laughs) Um, But you do this kind of painting on glass as well. uh, You can, you you can, can. you can. But this is on the polypropylene paper. So it's a UPO paper is the product that I use. And um, I work really large, and then I cut it down. So it's kind of a fun way to like, well, so I, as a kid, used to take markers and um, paper towels, and I would kind of make blotches and stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So that actually is kind of funny because um, that whole concept reminds me of you, like creating large and then yeah. focusing right on like the, the center, the most important thing. And that really is sort of how you're painting, which is really cool. I didn't even know you did it that way. Yeah. Um, but I have seen some of Sorinda's larger paintings. And you also paint, um, we talked about this once, that you don't necessarily paint with brushes. No, right? I, I do use brushes. Okay. So I am definitely very abstract and loose. Right. Um, my background was in illustration, so very tight. And mm-hmm. I found that... Um, I would never make the Mona Lisa. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, okay, get too I trapped work in the details. A little, yeah, too trapped okay. in the details. So I work very big and broad, and um, I use anything from like um, a credit card, mm-hmm. you know? So putting paint on with a credit card and then taking it off or using a sponge or, yeah, anything that's different. I like to use my fingers too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Best use for a credit card I've heard all day, folks. You heard it here. (laughs) Awesome. Great. So we have um, a guest from Idaho, Eureka Sally, saying hello from Idaho. Well, hi. Hi. And you are welcome to send your questions, and I can ask Serena your questions as we go. If you don't send questions, she has to answer my questions. (laughs) (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) That makes me wiggle in my seat. Right. A little (laughs) bit. A little bit. Um, So tell us just a little bit about what we're seeing here. Just let's start with this beautiful green piece. Tell us about this. So this is... A cellular bowl structure and it's made out of kiln formed glass. Um, I use art glass and bullseye is what I use. Um, So these are definitely, I love science. 
Mm -hmm. So when you look at cellular structures, they're very interesting to me. So they are. It's a way for me to incorporate that I'm little bit of to that image yeah. as well. These look lovely on the right. wall too. Oh, um, that's an interesting yeah. idea. The that shadows. Whole, yes, moving things from a, a horizontal surface yeah. to a vertical surface. Awesome. So Sarinda is also quite involved in the community uh, and has done a number yeah. of public art projects. So tell us uh, just a minute about what is your favorite public art project you've done. Oh. And then we have, we'll have some pictures of public art, but we'll show those in just a second. My, well, favorite, that's hard to um, say, really. <laughs> well, tell us what do you like about so, public art. Public art is, for me, an, an amazing way to um, expose people, the public, where they wouldn't normally be able to see art. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make them see art whether they want to. Yes, or not. of course. Awesome. Here, here you go. <laughs> Here's my art. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you about. Um, I know you've done a number of these projects of yes. public art, and in a number of different spaces. I know you have. Um, recently, just in the last little right. bit, there's been. I know one in a fire station. There's Lovely been here. one yeah. in a pocket park. Yes, downtown. in Salt Lake. Um, and there's also one um, by your studio. Which yeah, is in so a, in art space, in art space. Um, here in Utah, it's a really great community. Um, and there's these gardens that are right outside my studio, which, of course, I have a garden there. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> right. So um, there's a sculpture that is called Leverage. It's a very tall piece, and it has four different colors there. Nice. Um, it was a piece that kind of gave me leverage to get into my studio space. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very so, nice. So I think we have some pictures of some public art pieces that Sarinda has yeah. made. All right. So tell us about this one here. This one is at the Sugar House Fire Station here in Utah. Um, this was an amazing project that I worked with the firefighters. So each firefighter from the station um, created one of the discs. So they're enmeshed inside the large sculpture and there are nine inch discs and there's about 300 of them. Goodness, and I can see that they go across a wall and around, around the corner. And, and tell and us up. about um, the imagery that you're creating here with this and so, sort of where that came from, because I know that it has a little bit of a background. It story does have too. a bit of background. Um, it is called Parley's Undercurrent. So there's a Parley's Creek that runs through the space um, adjacent to the fire station, pretty close. So one of the requests that the firefighters asked for was um, peace and serenity. Um, so as I went to the park, I walked through and found this, the Parley's Creek. And mm -hmm. so this is the inspiration that came from the meandering path and bridging the bottom lobby to the community room upstairs. Nice. So that's a, it, a very beautiful meandering path of way of glass. Yes. So I have a fear of heights, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and so. there you are on the scaffolding. Uh -huh. Good job yeah. being brave yeah. with all I, those fire panties around. on, too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And one of the things I really love about that piece is the way that you've um, created this enormous reflection of something that enables these people to do their job. Yeah, and it, it's a hard job for sure. It is, it is. And I love that you've incorporated that. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, Tell me now um, about this little guy right here. And I'm just seeing the back of him from this angle, and right. I love this. Oh. Um, it is called, this technique that I created is called transpired. And so it transpired out of using my scrap materials. So oh, Very nice. Yeah. I'm all about this scrap is, materials. It mean, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So... Um, it's kind of funny that I created this technique to um, use with scrap. It is my most commissioned work. Oh, isn't still that funny? After 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's funny how that works out. And yeah. that's, that is not the first time I've heard an artist say something like that. Right. That it's sort of that spinning out, looking, going, mm -hmm. okay, how do I solve a problem? Right. And what does it turn into? And it started, um, anybody remember Light Bright? Yes, do yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so this reminds me of playing with little pecs. 
Awesome. So we do have a question that is oh, asking yeah. how Serinda got started in glass. Um, so tell us how long you've been working with glass and then a little bit about how you ended up in this this fragile field. <laughs> <laughs> it is fragile. Um, you know, it's kind of a funny story. I, in a previous life, I was um, in the salon industry. Okay. So I held hands for a living for about 17 years. And, so therapist. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to talk to my clients on that one. <laughs> Somewhat. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, seriously, but there was this wonderful little um, antique store, and they had these glass marbles mm -hmm. there. And so every chance I got, my clients can attest to this, I would find myself there purchasing these marbles. Awesome. And there is a joke to that. Do you do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Because you, you you're really finding like your marbles, marbles. <laughs> finally one at a time. So. <laughs> no question how they got lost. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, it was glass marbles that kind of turned me on. Nice. To glass. And then where did you go from there? Well, I... What um, was your first glass experience? My first glass experience is a friend that we both have still. Her name is Cynthia Oliver. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. In so fact, I, Vera, if you are familiar at all with Vera, <laughs> Cynthia Vera. Oliver was Vera's... Real mom. I'm her uh -huh. adopted mom. <laughs> so. She has both very good moms, <laughs> and I've used her before. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was going through a divorce, and I was looking for glass, and I knocked on Cynthia Oliver's door, studio door, and asked her if she could teach me. Mm -hmm. She was a little bit reluctant, um, but she. I think we did two classes. And I was like hooked. Awesome. I was excited. I took her and her husband to Del Chihuly was this was 2002 mm -hmm. for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And so I took her and her husband to um, a book signing by him. Oh, nice. And he, I naively asked where someone like me would go to learn about it. And obviously ha he has a school called Pilchuck Glass School. Um, I applied and like the planets aligned. That's my first application to a school of that nature, as well as my art space. Um, I applied to get in there. Mm -hmm. So when I received both, like it was within two weeks. Oh wow! So like planets just kind of aligned. Mm -hmm. I went to Pilchuck. The message was clear. I was very clear, <laughs> and I came home and uh, applied for a small business loan, and. Yeah. Marvelous. This is a beautiful, beautiful story, not just of glass, but also of female business success. And mm -hmm. I love that. Women owned business yes. success. That's terrific. That's so I do have a couple of questions here. Um, get me off the hook with your questions. <laughs> get, uh, well, uh, right. Okay. Totally random question. I love Sarinda's name. Is there a story behind it? There is. It's two great grandmothers, Sarah and Linda. Awesome. And just squished. And Sally says it sound like sounds like it should mean beautiful Sarah, which oh, somewhat, Thank right? You. Sarah Linda. There is a spider named Sarinda. Is there? There is. You'll have to look that up. Oh, how they're funny. Kind of they're funny. When did mm -hmm. you learn it like? Well, you have to Google. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I remember when there was no Google, which is how right, old we are, too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mary has a question really sure. curious to know how you got a commission from a fire department. Oh, and so there is another question about a commission in a park, and where do you apply for that? So tell it, talk to us yeah, a little bit so more about public art and commission work. Public art, they um, the city or state usually has um, like a museum, an arts department where you can apply for RFQs and RFPs. Mm -hmm. and so what is RFQ and RFP? Well, just a request for, who for in like a query, mm -hmm. like just of past work or an actual proposal. Okay. So then you apply, and there's usually um, so any your local um, arts community should have a website for public art, so mm -hmm. you can Google that, um, and then you. Do a proposal for this particular piece. I did an RFQ, which was a query, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how many people applied. I think there was quite a few, and then they brought me in to actually do a proposal. One nice. of three people, so I was shortlisted, and then you do a proposal, and um, hopefully all goes well. And right, 
And so this is maybe not off topic, but let yeah. me ask you, um, how many times have you applied for one of these and mm -hmm. received it versus how many <laughs> times have you re um, applied and not received it? I just want people to understand that this, yeah. is, this is actually a very ongoing process that you have to try again and, and, again, and, and, again, again, and again and again and again and again and again. I have a stack of um, letters <laughs> that are not, yes, we would love to have you. <laughs> so there's fair, that. Fair enough. And I keep every one of them and I look through them. But um, in all honesty, I probably put out at least two a quarter. Okay. Yep. Just so consistently. As, consistently, I just find. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I also know that you have had um, commissions from companies as well for That's their correct. corporate offices mm -hmm. and is the process for that different? It is different. They usually use an art dealer, so kind of a third party entity. Okay, so rather than you going and finding it, they come and find you? Correct, but okay. I do have my website and I do have different um, places that I have my work right. that they can peruse and see if I'm a good fit. Okay, so, so there's some, there. they need the ability to preview and to, to preview your work, yes. so you really do have to have some sort of structure in place. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. So it is you not people to... just walking in off the street and finding no, you because not... you're a genius. And that <laughs> I would wish be lovely. they would just knock on my door and. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So just a quick reminder yeah. that you can watch this podcast on any platform, including Spotify, and we would love for you to join us on your favorite one. Um, before we get into the next batch of questions, make sure that you have liked and shared and commented and all yes, that please. stuff because we love to have Serinda here. Um, we do have another question. Do you send proposals for out of state too or just in Utah? No, out of state. Most As of well. my work, the um, fire station was the biggest commission that I've done in Utah. And it was sizable. It was a, it was a very nice um, project. And then um, Eureka Sally, who asked about your right. name, says, beautiful story, beautiful woman, beautiful Aww. work, right? Aww. Are you guys not you glad guys are... that I brought her here? Is she not amazing? I am going to be blushing now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And she says, Sarinda's alcohol painting and the cellular glass bowl structure have a lovely interplay. Of course, her vision ties together all her works. Awesome installation, too. And that is very true. Her vision does tie together across all of her different media. And speaking of, we also have over here in the front, yep. what do we have here? In, on the yes, mannequin? Right so here. these are um, silk scarves, and I am doing a class for- We'll, we'll talk about the class okay. later. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's Oops. okay. Um, um, tell us about how, and I'm very curious how this works with this, because there is definitely, if you look across here, you can see, we have this color story that ties across mm -hmm. all three pieces, three different media in three different pieces. And right. tell us how that related to the process of creating all of these. It how all did you end up there? With silk scarves? Mm -hmm. Well, again, it came from that napkin and using <laughs> markers. Um, I like color a lot. Okay. And I like working with different materials. So glass is a very structured, rigid material. Um, obviously, it's melty, too. Sometimes. But I, sometimes, <laughs> if you do it right, right. <laughs> hopefully. Um, and the silk, I'm also a knitter and a crocheter. I do that for me. Um, and so silk is nice and, um, like, squishy. I like playing with it. <laughs> that, folks, is a technical term. Yeah. Squishy. For fiber artists everywhere. Sorry. It is. <laughs> no, we do. We have tech. We have, uh, we have these insider words that we use in every medium. Yeah. And um, it's almost, it's not a code word, but it's almost a word of affection that we use yeah. for different things. And so that. squishy is, is a term that I also hear in, in regards to yarn. Yeah. Because my child is also a fiber person, so mm -hmm. I do hear that as well. Um, now, we have some more pictures of Serena's work that we want to show you here. Um, all right. Oh, and so here is some more oh, cellular. cellular bowls. So let's talk mm -hmm. some more about that. Um, tell us a little bit about how, not it's super in depth about the process, but like what, do you look at reference material while you're doing these? Or do you have a picture in mind or is it something that you 
cre like ex create as you go. I, you. yeah, I create as I go. I'm very um, kind of on the spot type of person. I do have templates that I do use if I'm creating larger pieces and multiples that need to look the same. But honestly, these are just willy nilly. And nice. that's kind of fun for me it's that mm -hmm. each one is one of a kind. Nice. I love these ones here that are multiple pieces together. Yeah. I think they work very well in a group like this. So uh, have you, I don't know if you've seen Radilarians. Have you, their little structures, um, they're little, yeah, yes. teeny tiny. Yes, yes. So if you look at that, mm -hmm. that's where this is coming from. Oh, okay. So gotcha. radiolarians. Yes. And are they um, sea creatures, aren't they? Microscopic, yes. mm -hmm. silica-based yes. sea. Mm -hmm. Silica. <laughs> yes. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> and Mary says fiber and glass. How interesting. She does all sorts of things. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Uh, so. Um, you mentioned needing to sometimes make things that looked like each other, um, which, explain that a little bit. Where, what scenario would you need to make things that look like each other? Well, for example, if I'm doing a large project, I need to, um, and it's a commission base, mm -hmm. um, accidents happen. And so if I was asked to recreate something, okay. so I make a template, mm -hmm. so I know exactly how I made it, note, Perfect. very note taking, Right. what so, colors I've used, such. That is actually, I love hearing that because I'm a compulsive keeper of records Yes, you as are. Well. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why I always go to her when I need something. <laughs> so um, tell me a little bit about, um, because I, I'm not a public art person. Um, I'm excessively introverted in real life situations. I'm only good on camera. Um, <laughs> so, but tell me a little bit about your responsibilities to a public art project after the project is finished. Like there's some ongoing responsibilities there is. even um, after the end of the project. I maintenance. Think, so what would that look like? Say for example, um, I do a piece and it's local. And um, rather than having someone come in and maintain it, mm -hmm. um, I'm taking the Windex to it, if okay. you will. So, yeah. so for example, the, the leverage sculpture it. outside of your studio. Yeah, okay. I, I love it. Talk to it nice every day. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And so this is, um, this is a part of the planning process though, right? It is, for and sure. So for pieces that are out of state, do you make recommendations? I do. For that, I for do. maintenance mm -hmm. and that type of things. Okay. Yeah. So I think that that is fascinating. Sally Mason asks, is the glass work with the three pieces all fused together? And oh, in this here. one? Mm -hmm. If I don't knock it over. Nope. They're all No, it's not. Stacked. But they could they be. They could be, technically. Okay. Or they could be sandwiched with, um, if say we're doing a wall mount, mm -hmm. they can be, there's a product that I use that is hardware basically okay so yeah for hanging purposes so yeah, it's so not it, like you, you can stack them deep oh nice yeah okay so you don't have to just pound a nail into the wall and hope for the best I would hope not <laughs> <laughs> we'd not hope hard in yeah. fact <laughs> <laughs> so Sheila says many teachers are natural introver introverts except in their classroom Sheila's one of my favorite people uh, I'm so happy to true. share Sarinda with you Sheila because I think that you're going to love her oh, the camera you. gives you access to your classroom that is true actually. I do like that I, am, I love teaching it's important to me um, passing the torch so um, I like people that's a good thing when you're a teacher right I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> you like people too. I do like people. I just like to pretend like I'm all cranky and, and you know, gruff. I'm like the billy goat gruff, but not really. Okay. So let me ask you um, about, um, I make a little bit, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge person that enjoys making jewelry. I love to make beads. And then when I sit down to make the actual jewelry, I'm, it's laborious. Uh-huh. Mostly uh -huh. the boar part. <laughs> um, so, but yeah. I know you actually make a lot, and, and we have a piece here. Um, 
It is lovely, and I know that you call these um, wearable sculpture, and I think that's fantastic because it mm -hmm. is wearable sculpture. It's this beautiful little complex piece. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the process and how how you make the laborious less laborious, <laughs> or at least enjoyable. It's, it will. Color, again, arranging okay. color. Um, these, someone now, at- Can you tip that just, I'd like yeah. to see if we can give people a side view of that so they can see the layers in there. Because it is really a complex piece for it, it being is. so small. It's got a lot going on. Um, so I was at the Utah Arts Festival this year and a woman came through and she's like, these are like square marbles. <laughs> I looked at her, I'm like, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> what do you say to that? That's funny. That is actually. funny. Yeah, that that's where it all funny. started for me. And there, so. right? It, yeah. You came all the way back to the beginning and. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, she did. I didn't did not. even know it. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's funny. So it's funny that that's where her brain led her. Right. And that, you know, I hadn't caught on to it until she said it. But it is, it's the layering, it's again using my scrap materials mm -hmm. to make uh, a new product. Um, I do these in large slabs of glass, then I um, take a tile saw and cut them up and then bevel, mm -hmm. so I grind them. That's the laborious part. Yes, it for, is. But, um, it's, um, but if you, it's, at times it actually has its place. It because does. It, it keeps my squirrel busy so that I can actually do I something I problem solve. Else. Yes. So, I mean, when your mm -hmm. hands are busy and working right. like that, I'm thinking about other, my master plan. Right. Right? Yeah. You, Scheming. Yes. Your, your uh, plan for world domination. Of art. <laughs> exactly. So, I'm not sure if you noticed what you just said, but when you're describing yes. your necklace, it was almost exactly the same as mm -hmm. you used as when you were describing your painting. Um, it's a crossover. It is Everything. a crossover, and I love that. I love mm -hmm. that it's that it weaves together back and forth and creates this amazing, um, this amazing whole of things. Um, let me see if we you have, have any. Questions? Oh no, we just my questions. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> right. So <laughs> tell me a little bit more. I know that um, you actually have done a lot of glass classes that, you that you've taken. Take classes, it. Yes. Right? And I think it's very interesting because I have taken no classes, <laughs> and you have taken many classes, and um, it really informs both of our work. I uh, tend to go off in the field in the weeds. Um, I do that too. You do that too. I, do. I know you do that too, uh, and we often do it together. In <laughs> fact, That's which the fun part. yes, which is a, which the is master fun. plan. But um, I have recently started taking classes, which is a new thing for me, and it mm. I, I did not understand why people do that, and then I f took one, and it's because it's fun. It's fun. It is. It's I like a know. retreat. I didn't know that. So. Um, tell me about a, a class that you've taken that Ooh. not necessarily was your favorite, but the one that you felt like really challenged, turned things oh. for you, that really just gave yeah. you that like, That's a good question. holy cow, right? That, that thing that was the absolute shock in your art practice. You know, that was when I went to Scotland. I was um, with Steve Klein and Richard Parrish, and they did a residency at Northlands Creative. Um, in Scotland, and that's in Leipster, so it's the very tippy tippy top of Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, I have Scottish background history, so for me, going there was like all of a sudden I saw everyone that kind of looked like me, right? And it, it was a weird experience. It was weird, mm -hmm. good. Um, I felt familiar. It felt and strange, at, and the strange at the same time. <laughs> it was lovely. Um, and the two instructors are amazing. They both have been mentors of mine for a long time, um, which I'm grateful to. And, you know, I love the ocean. I mean, all the sea structures mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, really. And it's peaceful mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So I think that was the turnaround for me, working differently. Awesome. I remember pictures from that yeah. residency. I need it, to go back. It was pretty impressive. Sheila says, I have um, had the occasional accident at a show, and the cause of the accident is often mortified. I will reassure them there is no such thing as scrap glass. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> 
What is it people say? Don't uh, refuse to refuse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, my bucket, my bone pile is what I call. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. It's kind of treasured. A little bit. Because it's the back mistakes and, the, and find and, something. Yeah, of course. And, mm-hmm. and, well, they're not. And trigger, really, it triggers yeah. a new, different it's, direction. Yeah. It makes me wander off, for sure. Cleaning the <laughs> studio does that, too. Yes. In a good way. It does. Um, I, I'm having a... You just recently cleaned yours. I, yeah. And then I taught a class, and that was that. <laughs> so, um, Yay. I'm, all right, I'm having a little focus issue with my own studio at the moment. So, But I think we have a couple more pictures I'd like to okay. share with you here. And tell us about this. So this is a trip. Tell us how big this is. So this thing is enormous. It is enormous um, for glass. It is, well, so each panel is three feet tall and a foot wide. Okay. And then this is a detail... Sh- we're getting to the detail shot, but um, mm-hmm. it's powdered glass, so sheet glass, powdered glass, and it is um, kind of cool. Again, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool <laughs> technique, you okay. know what I mean? It's gotcha. kind of cool to play. I'm looking at it, and it looks very cool to me. And it's the same thing with the ink and um, the fiber and working in right. that way and okay. kind of fusing water. Wonderful. So um, let's look at the next picture too because I love this one. Okay. Tell us about this one. And I, if I remember right, this was from earlier. Yeah, it was this one was of my earlier early piece. pieces. Um, this is called DNA. So again, back to the science mm-hmm. thing. It's a common denominator for me. But DNA is um, a your strands of DNA. So this is no one in particular. It was fun and creative. So marvelous. Okay. So um, I know that you have done some commission work for um, public health programs. This is a picture here, and I particularly love this one. Um, this one was called Pins, Pins and, and Needles. Needles. I um, remember. Yeah. So this piece was inspired by my son's early stay at a hospital. He had staphylococcus in his bloodstream, and so mm-hmm. we're lucky to have him still. And so this piece was very much a um, release of the pins and needles that we were on, mm. you know, and mm-hmm. dealing with that, so. Yes, because once you have a kid. Wow, well, yeah. Right? Sheila says, I cannot imagine having the kiln big enough to do that piece. The Oh, I want a bigger one. <laughs> I want Vera size. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, what's funny about that is I just bought a smaller kiln. Did you? I did, um, a 26-inch round one uh, because it's a lot of work to fill a gigantic kiln. It is. I like having little sparky. Yes. Um, that was my first kiln that I purchased, and it's a Paragon, and it's an oval shape, or not right. oval, but round Roundish. I'm sure it's very similar. Yeah. Um, And I was going to ask you a question about it. I can't remember how many years it's been because we've known each other for a very long time. But there was the, um, and I'm trying to now, I've lost the name of it, where you were a finalist. The Niche Awards. Tell us about those. Oh, my gosh, yeah. That has been a while. That has 2010, I think think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm have, I remember that things happen in the winter, but which winter is a little fuzzy. Right. So. so the Niche Award is a really cool award. It was um, 2010. I submitted, I believe, DNA. Yeah. That's what reminded yeah. me of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. See, you even remember more about me than I remember <laughs> about me. <laughs> Does it get, it's blurry. <laughs> anyway, yes. So, so tell us about what is, what are the Niche Awards for people who haven't heard of those? Well, so the, uh, that's it. Do you know what they are? Um, I cannot remember who runs them. But I do not remember who runs them it's either. It's an award. They're awards for the best artist art in particular categories, and you can apply right. in different categories. And it is a nationwide, possibly even international. Is it? It might be international, it might be international, now. international now. I'm not sure. And to be it's extremely prestigious. So it was a huge honor for little old Utah to have yeah, you right, yeah. in the, <laughs> and you're a finalist, is that right? Which yeah. is in which is like the top tiny handful of yeah. amazing artists in that in the category. It was a, a really amazing thing. It was amazing. I, I was shocked. 
at that time because I hadn't been doing glass for very long. And so it felt like I was, how do I explain it? I was reaching further than like my comfort zone. I was okay. really going out of my way. And that was my next question is how did that feel? And how, Scary. Did, you, how did you get over that, that? I don't think you do. You just do it. You, you just, just, every time I do a public art project, it's kind of, I even, I get nervous. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is going to, you know, yeah. Right, me too. Yeah. Um, and do you have any strategies to share with us? To strategies. Get, right? Like, do you ever distract yourself with some yes. other issue and then just... Like the dog run, you mean? Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> she knows me well. <laughs> I do it too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I do. Again, I, I will work on... If I'm having a challenge in glass, I will free up and work with paint okay. because it's a fluid and mm -hmm. or I'll work with um, scarves, mm -hmm. something that helps me kind of get because, you know, you get stru structure and rigid mm -hmm. with yourself and that's and never good. You got to no. keep the and flow. That's very true. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and when I get stuck, I dig holes in things or I don't, my yeah. yard is, I know. you know right. what my yard looks like. <laughs> it looks like. Uh, there were landmines in it. Um, <laughs> but the other thing that I do is uh, I sort very small things. So when yes. I get to that point, I sort tiny, tiny beads into color categories. Oh, I have a whole, if you ever need, uh, I have well, some I jewelry might. bits for, with your name on it. Because I've just finished sorting all of the beads <laughs> that I have handy. Um, yeah. So Mary asks, what was the piece that made you a finalist? And if we could... Uh, roll oh, back yeah. a couple pieces to the, it was three sculptural pieces with stripes, with horizontal stripes. It's titled DNA. I don't know what the file name is. And show, nope, three vertical pieces. Um, so while they're looking for that yeah. piece, um, Gretchen Peterson says we always want a bigger kiln. We always want something. Yes. That, right? Um, so tell us a little bit. You were in, a, so I still work in my home studio, um, and you referenced me cleaning it, which doesn't really do much good. <laughs> it means I just shove all of everything into the corners. But you have been, um, for almost as long as I've known you, you've been in a commercial studio space. And for most of the, for, I mean, for a little minute there, you were working yeah. in a, your gr garage. My garage. Mm -hmm. And that was when Mason, my son, was small. Yes, which the flexibility is awesome, right. right? To have that as an artist, to have that flexibility mm -hmm. is terrific. But tell me a little bit about, I feel like when you move into a commercial space, there is this fundamental shift in mindset um, as an artist. And, and what, is that, what does that feel like to go from like, how did that change the way you do art to be in a commercial space versus just in your back bedroom? It's, it's a business. So it was, so, so many it's, of us start out as hobbyists and you, um, this is the thing that impresses me here is that you, you went to Pilchuck and you came back and you took out a loan and it was immediately a business. Yes. And so many of us, well, myself I have to, included. I have a habit to pay well, for. Right, to pay for. <laughs> but, and so many people, including myself, we, we start out and we go, oh, well, eventually we'll get to what point Right. That, that it becomes a business. And it took a while. I mean, and I, so again, holding hands mm -hmm. um, fed the habit for quite some time. So there was some transition there, time. Of course, always. It right. wasn't just like ma magic <laughs> Hi, wand. Hi, here's my and, sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and welcome. Come on in. Yeah. So, okay, so we have found the DNA piece. So Mary, oh, yeah. this is for you. Um, this in this is the uh, the piece that was in the niche award finalist that Sarinda received. Um, and tell us how big this is. So it's it, hard to tell just from this picture. So. Right. I would love to do this large scale, um, but these are tabletop pieces. Um, the tallest piece I think is 22 inches, um, and I think the width was five inches. Okay. And they're almost a half inch thick. Nice. Um, each piece, so you can see how they kind of stagger down. Mm -hmm. But what I love, the interplay of the crossover of the lines 
when they're stacked like that. Mm -hmm. Where you, because they begin to talk to each, each other. other. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have another piece here of yours that's sculptural, and yeah. it's this beautiful piece here. Um, tell me about this. Um, I know that you did some cast, a whole series of cast pieces. Yes. And um, tell us, tell me about those. So this was done. Um, this body of work is called X Hell, and so it was when my mother passed away in 2008, mm -hmm. and she passed with COPD, which mm -hmm. is a lung issue. So right. this represents this particular piece represents healthy lung tissue. Oh. Again, back to the science, the science, <laughs> and the emotion of it all. Um, so it's cast. It's um, I would say that's about an inch and a half thick. Yeah, it's yeah. it is quite thick. Um, that's I love casting. I I think and it's talk to me about this part. So this, that's the lung tissue, right? And how do you um, do you so radiolarians? Um, mm -hmm. They are a C structure, so right. they're um, small and microscopic, but they also have um, what are they called? They're like you can find them. At like Michael's in their little oh the, the sea sponge thing yes, yes that's it Lufa kind of kind deals. of things right sea yeah. sponge okay so when I was making the mold for this I would impress that sea sponge okay. into clay in which you know marvelous the, okay so you you multi layered I love this that you that you are um, tying not just your artwork to the theme, but the materials that you're using, even though people never see that sea sponge, no, it still informs the the whole vision, right? Which and, is great. And the funnest part for me is to take the clay <laughs> and like, well, what does this shape make, and right. what is this going to do? So mm, I quite enjoy that yeah. part of it too. Uh, very nice. Um, so let we have a couple more pictures. And then I have some other questions to ask you. Okay, so this one we have here is, it looks like two pieces that have a slight curve and they, so tell us about this sculptural piece. It's called It Is. Simple enough. Right. Um, so It Is is made with um, Marini cane or pattern bars that I made and then I took to the hot shop and, and pulled. Mm -hmm. So the center detail is that, um, and, and there's a close-up of the yeah. center detail. I really like how they flop over and it's, yeah, microscopic and a bigger piece. Right, so and there's a little bit of surprise in there, like when they move in the kiln. Yeah, it's, the, it's really yeah cool. I love it. And here's another a piece from the coming up here uh, from the Exhale, Exhale mm -hmm. series. Does, yeah. Do you remember the name of this one? They're all called Exhale. Oh, right. And of then, they so, are. Um, yes, they were just numbered. I remember them when they were shown at um, Finch Lane. Finch Lane. Yeah. At the Art Barn. Mm -hmm. Right. Very nice. Uh, Nancy says, what is the difference between a tool and a toy? Hmm. There is no difference. Oh. A couple letters. <laughs> She's and she, funny. <laughs> yes, she is actually. And uh, she says, I liked the pink piece when I first saw it. Now that I've heard the backstory, I love it. Oh, thank you. And it is the story that makes it for us. So we actually have some pretty exciting, I think, exciting news. Um, and you have some classes coming up. I do. Some Yay. online classes. How exciting. I think this is like I've super exciting. Wanted, so Yeah, to do it for a so while. So tell us about the classes that you'll be teaching. I do have the dates of your classes here. Oh, look, you're These prepared. These are on uh, Curious Mondo. Yes. Um, and uh, tell us about those. So in glass, I will be doing the um, cellular bowl structures, and I have a couple of surprises for you, bonus things that we'll okay. play with. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a fun way. I'm the willy nilly of it. <laughs> the willy nilly so, of it. Uh, hopefully. And so tell us a little bit. Like, well, this is this. Can, would you consider this a beginner level class? Like, the way I teach, um, everything's beginner. So nice. 
Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. Of course. All right. And that class will be February 17th, 18th, and 19th of 2020. Um, and Cernda will be here at the Curious Mondo Studios teaching that class. Yeah. And then, but you are also bringing your multimedia talents to us in another way. Tell I us am. about the other class that we, we are looking forward to. The Silk Scarves. Marvelous. I um, will be doing shibori and tie dye and kind of mixing it up with my own little things. Twist yeah, things. I, you know, it's kind of like that paper towel thing. So we'll play with that. <laughs> But, with but soap. will there be actual paper towels and markers? Mm, well, if we make a mess. All right. Well, not if you're markers. anything like me, there will be a mess. <laughs> I am a, a. It's the best thing. Right. I'm like pig pen. I there behind me is this mess. It follows me wherever we go. And the silk scarf class will be March 16th, 17th, and 18th. So of, February of and March. Yeah. We've got her lined up and busy already. Yay. How exciting is that? I'm very excited. And so tell us what new thing you have coming up uh, in your art world. What is the, the next thing that you do here? Ooh, the next in thing your world? in my world. Well, mm -hmm. right now I'm working on a um, home commission in Park City, Utah. Um, so I'm busy doing a transpired piece. Awesome. And it's going to be nine feet tall. Wow. And three um, panels. So. Multiples. I was going to say, yeah. will they be separate panels? Yeah. Nine feet is a lot to install it's, all at once. It is, and I have an installer this time. Awesome. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things in it, our business <laughs> that just make it so awesome. That's great. And then do you, what do you do uh, in terms of, do you do any Christmas things? Oh, holiday things. Yeah, I'm going to be doing um, the JCC here locally. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing that craft show and waiting to hear back on a few others. Nice. So, yeah. Awesome. And then teaching a lot. Teaching a lot. Mm -hmm. We love that part. All right. Well, thank you for being with us today. Uh, we, this is Sarinda Jones, and you can see more of her work at sarindajones.com. She has a lovely website. You should check that out. Uh, she will be, again, teaching some online classes mm -hmm. in glass and jewelry at Curious Mondo next spring, very early spring in 2020, and we're quite looking forward to that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you Thanks. for sharing and for your comments and reviews. We love to hear and see all of those. Um, and please join us next week. We will be visiting with another artist. We do this every Tuesday at 2.30 Mountain Time. So you should definitely come back. Check, check us in. out again. And this has been Creativity in Focus podcast. I'm Jody McCraney-Rusho, and we'll see you next time.